But most people don't really know all facets of BCF, including some of us like me who are newer trustees. What's the elevator speech that explains it all? Well, we're on the ninth floor with a very slow elevator. <laughs> so um, I can vouch for And her. we can't we can't move for that reason because if it were a, if it were New York Express elevator, we'd be out of business. <laughs> Put simply, we are eight hundred firms or found, uh, funds or foundations. People understand the Abel Foundation. People understand the Casey Foundation. This was a donor who wanted to do some good and left a corpus. In our case, we are many, many, many funds. Rather than being one, it's 800, as I said. And of those 800, about a third um, involve a working relationship with a living donor who uses us as a partner in his or her philanthropy. About a third serve a special purpose, and about a third are used on a discretionary basis, fully discretionary basis, by the board to do good in Baltimore. So on the one hand, we are a philanthropic bank, on the other hand, we are trying to have an impact, one fund, on, uh, one fund on the other, and we're really trying to bring all of that work together to make it all happen. So our vision, Baltimore boasts a growing economy in which all have the opportunity to thrive. So it's about merging economic development with poverty reduction so that all, so that, so that all boats go up, and particularly those people who aren't yet even swimming necessarily can be fully floating and moving forward. Um, but it, we are nothing more than a group of philanthropic funds. And we're therefore very complicated administratively. Every fund has its own life. It's got gifts in, it's got grants out, it's got an investment strategy, and it's got people who either advise it or work with it. So we work with a huge variety of people. Can you break, break that down in terms of stakeholders? Who are the various constituencies that BCF serves, for example, and how do you serve them? Sure. Well, it's a huge variety of stakeholders, and what's interesting in our history, um, whereas the United Way was founded to serve a large variety of nonprofits so they could speak in one voice to raise money in the corporate community and among their employees and more um, serving the nonprofits, community foundations were founded to serve donors. And they were founded often by banking institutions who wanted to help the trust companies help their donors be as effective in their philanthropy as they were in their private transactions with families on with individuals and families on their wealth. In theory, it starts with a donor and ends with a grantee. But in the case of a community foundation, it's much more than that because uh, everything is governed by a board. And for the people who give the dollars outright, all of the income from dollars that are given to us are allocated by that board. They don't give this to Tom Wilcox and his colleagues. They give it to you two and your colleagues who then figure out how best to do this. Donors, board members who oversee, um, um, philanthropic partners, people in the community who are doing other things, um, grantees, we would be useless without our grantees, um, the general public, uh, and particularly in the case of BCF because we've decided that while we administer 800 funds and serve the individual interests of each of those fund holders, we also serve the collective interest of all of those donors. And what can we do to serve their larger interests? So we decided that we could be their voice. And indeed, to be their voice effectively, we could also be the voice of the grantees. And we, we could become an independent, nonpartisan voice for Baltimore. So in many ways, our constituency is what Bob Kent, our former board chair and one of the world's greatest people, said, the phone book. Now I guess you'd say the cyber something. But uh, it's Baltimore. The broad stakeholder is Baltimore. And we really are a trust, both in terms of being a philanthropic trust and a place where people put their trust and hopes. So can you quantify for us where BCF stands today in terms of how much is in the civic endowment, what flows in and out on an annual basis, mm -hmm. et cetera? Yeah, let me, let me start with what flows in and out, because we have an interesting anachronism. The commercial charitable gift funds that hold donor advice funds, similar to ours, measure their success on the size of their assets. We measure our success much more on the impact of our grant making. So in some ways, uh, if, if, I were, if I were to be compensated for the amount that, that that assets come and stay, which is what the mission of that is, um, I'd probably get fired immediately um, because we, they don't stay. We work very hard to help our donors get the money out into the community. And actually speaks, we're going to talk about our strategic plan so let's talk about it annually. 
In the 90s, BCF granted up to about $5 million a year. Thanks to activating all of these donors in these 800 funds and getting them really engaged in the community, um, Fat Evers grant making has gone up to about $25 million a year. So we've seen this really significant surge in grant making, not necessarily always to our strategic ends because it's often um, responding to the donor's interest. Um, so we've seen a great surge there. We only had, in terms of a permanent endowment, in, in, in the year 2000, about $28 million in permanent endowment. Right now, that's, that's, um, that's about $115 million, and with some pledges that are due, we'll end up being between $175 and $200 million um, to the endowment. So, and that's a really significant change, because these are dollars that will be here, and the income will drive change. But the bigger story really is the fact that we raise annually from our donors anywhere from 3 to $8 million to support our initiatives. $8 million would require $160 million, if you took 5%, if you took 5 would require $160 million in, uh, in assets. So our core assets are, are $175 million right now. Uh, we have another $110 million in what we call allied assets, um, and we'll come back to that. We have relationships with private foundations who rely on us for their philanthropy.